Working with your clients can be difficult and that we can't change that. Uh, but we can help you create one space for you and your clients that you can always send your clients to so that they have their own space. This is your client portal. Click on workspace settings and then client portal to start customizing this so it looks like your branding. There's never any moxie branding, just what you add to your client portal. So you can choose your font, add your logos, add a fave icon. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Uh, you can make it look great in light mode or in dark mode because we all know everyone loves dark mode. Uh, you'll have a login screen. So the first time that your clients uh, go to log into their client portal, this is how they will see it. This is connected to your email. So uh, with your email, you are uh you're going to grant them access via their email and then they'll log in with a magic link so they'll enter that email address go to their email box they'll have a link that will allow them to log in they'll only see their projects and the things that they're working on uh, that's based out of uh in your clients here uh when you have your client listed their contact information is listed here that's how you're going to grant them access to this specific client portal and all the things that are in this specific client portal. Uh, so this is how they'll log in. Uh, you can build, uh, you can decide, we're going to come back to custom pages, promise. Uh, you can uh, toggle on and off each of the features. So if you only want to show them projects, you can toggle all of these off um, or you can leave them all on if your client likes to have tons of details or anywhere in between. You can also grant custom permissions. So here under permissions, you can allow custom access. So maybe with one client, you uh, let them see all the details and with another client, you only want them to see your project. So you can toggle all of these things off. Uh, whatever that looks like for you, you can go by client or universally. So uh, the custom access is here under permissions where you'll grant specific access. Uh, you can also add a custom email and custom domain here. I won't get too much into that. Uh, we have some really great help docs on that. Uh, that's here in the question mark in the upper right hand corner if you want to read more about adding a custom domain and custom email. Let's get back into your client portal and custom pages. Now, this uh, is as easy or as simple as you would like. So if you wanna add a custom welcome video uh, and you uh, create a video, you upload it to YouTube, uh, you could plug that video right here. It's as simple as uh, typing in the YouTube link right here. You can use this video playlist. Uh, you add your source, uh, you can add the height then and width that you would like it to be, and then uh, uh, there is the, um, the video that you have uh, for your clients, or you could make it more complicated. If you love to uh, create and write your own custom code, uh, you could make something that probably looks way better than this, honestly. Uh, full disclosure, I asked Austin, uh, who helps you, uh, who will answer you if you have a question in our help chat. Uh, he created all this and I just copied and pasted it. Uh, but if you have some know-how, you can really add in lots of different things. We have uh, a few different layouts here for you and you can add in custom code uh, by clicking on this custom source code button. Lots of things there and honestly, way more than I understand as well. Uh, the other thing here that you'll choose whether this page is enabled or disabled, that is universally across the board for all of your clients. And you can choose if this is the default page. So uh, I have this one set up currently as the default page. Uh, so that means when your client gets past the login screen, this is the first page that they'll see to welcome them. You can also add an external link. So uh, if you want to uh, send them to a specific website or you want to include your social media, you can add an external link uh, in the left sidebar of their client portal. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Um, you can also do this by client. So uh, if you want to add a client specific page, now I can add a link here specifically for this client that will show up in their client portal. Same for an iframe. So uh, if you want to add a form specifically, uh, you could iframe your form here. Uh, and you can also, again, create client specific pages. If you love an iframe, this is a really great um, 
you can choose that as your link type. And um, instead of sending them to another link, the iframe will just uh, be here in your client portal. We'll show that again in just a moment. That's what the setup looks like for your client portal. Let's take a look at what your client portal will look like. The best way for you to test out and make sure your client portal is exactly the way that you want it is to go into permissions and click these three dots to view the portal as that specific client. Uh, that way, when you've turned on different permissions, uh, you can see, oh, this is what that looks like for that specific client. So here in your client portal, you can see this is that welcome page that I showed you earlier. So this is the default page that they can look at and they can watch my video. Uh, here's the more simple page uh, that just has the video on it. And I have everything here turned on. So I have uh, invoices set up for them. So this client can see here are invoices that are due, some are late, uh, this one's pending, and they also get a full history of what's been paid. They can also click into those invoices and they can see what they paid for as well. Same thing for time worked. They're able to see the time that you have logged for specific projects. And uh, they uh, also get a quick report on that as well. Uh, this is managed by you. You get to decide in your project settings which time that your client sees. Or you can toggle this off altogether. So you don't have to show them all of the time worked across all projects. Uh, just uh, you get to toggle on which projects you show them uh, the time. That's the same for projects. So some of your projects, you can give just an overview. Some of your projects, you can give uh, no access and some that you can give full access and you collaborate on the project together. So uh, in this type of project, I have turned on that they can see my time worked. Uh, that's also here in this time worked. Um, and I've turned on just an overview. So they just see a quick overview of what I've been doing with this project. However, with this specific project, uh, this different fees per task project, I have uh, turned on full project collaboration with the client. So they are able to click into each of these cards. They can add comments. They can add tasks and details. They can drop attachments here, and they can even change the status. All of the things that you can do in your project management, your client can do. If you want to work with them on a project, uh, this will allow them to get in and work on on that specific project with you. And then if you toggle this all the way off, they won't be able to see this project listed here in the project overview. And if your client prefers a timeline view, you have that here as well. They can also see agreements. Uh, they can see some are ready for signature. They can also see the ones that they have signed already and all of the contract terms that have been agreed to between the two of you. You can allow them to book a type of meeting. So when you set up your meeting scheduler, there is a toggle on and off uh, to show, oh, this, this meeting is available in my client portal. So you can create a specific meeting type for your client portal that has specific questions as well. And then your client can can see if they have booked any meetings with you and past bookings. Finally, you can have requests and tickets. So you'll create a form with these specific requests and tickets, and then you'll manage this in your communicator. We'll head back into your side of things in just a moment, but here's what it looks like for your client when you've got that set up. So they can create a new request, and this is the form that I created for them. So when they go to create a new request, they have to fill out all of this information and submit the request. Then they can see as I update that request, uh, they can see the, the type, they can see who requested it, and they can see any details that I have added here in the request. So uh, you can see the status here as well. This one is new. This one uh, I have moved to resolved. Um, and you can see you can comment back and forth here as well using uh, links and attachments. So that is requests. And so that is a really quick overview of what things look like for your client in their client portal. Uh, here's another quick view of uh, that iframe as well. Um, if you have, uh, I have iframe just a an easy form in here, uh, that is an option as well. So I put my form in here and uh, then my clients can submit that here. I could also name this um, requests or forms, uh, whatever you think is easier as you work with your client. 
Let's look at some of the ways that you set those things up. So uh, we'll take a look at meeting scheduler first. So in meeting scheduler, I have this one turned on. That's where you can say, I want to show this in my client portal. When it comes to your projects, uh, you can choose to show either just the time worked. Uh, so that was, uh, you click on the project and click on edit, and then you can choose in client portal access between full project collaboration. That was where I showed you that you have the full board view that your client can uh, fully collaborate and add comments and uh, change statuses. There's also read only where they can just see the projects that you're working on, but they aren't able to move anything. There is overview only where they just see kind of that high level view of the project and then not visible at all. You can also work with your clients if you choose to just do an overview of most of your projects in your project tasks, you can create a client column where you can say this is going to show up in my client workflow and this sets it so that when I pull something into this specific column, the client that I'm working with on this will receive an email that says that this is ready for your approval. So if you prefer to work with your client that way, you could essentially stay out of your client portal altogether. Um, but that does also show up in their client portal as well, that they've got um, a notification that they need to uh, approve a project. Finally, let's look at your uh, requests and tickets. Here's the way that you'll set that up. It's under communicator. Um, I'm sorry. First, you will want to set up a form. So think about the questions that you want to ask your clients. So uh, you'll set up the form that you want to use, and then you'll go into communicator and into requests and tickets. And you'll use this plus button to create a new type of request. So this is the type of request that I created uh, that we saw earlier in my client portal. Uh, so I've got this social media asset and then I chose that form from the drop down list. So after you've created the form, you use this drop down and choose that attached form. You don't have to do that, but that allows you to get really granular details and say, hey, client, this is the information that I need. And you can create your own status options here and edit as necessary. That's how you set up your requests and tickets. So that gives you a really quick overview of what things look like for you uh, as you set up work with your client portal and also your client portal.